Welcome. Thank you. Thank Please. you very much. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mike Daniel, uh, Daniel Lloyd. It's uh, my great pleasure to be here with you and to share my views on the uh, Belt and the Road Initiative. I am agree. I totally agree with uh, Professor Daniel uh, Lloyd that the world is changing and we all are facing challenges. In the in the uh, in China, we notice the the red, uh, radical uh, changes every day. There are lots of uh, projects, uh, infrastructure, construction uh, 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 work going on. And also, when I came to uh, Sweden, Gothenburg, I actually I uh, found the same. There are lots of constructions, uh, lots of uh, infrastructure uh, projects. But it is uh, obviously it is not enough that China only developed uh, itself in China and Sweden in uh, Sweden. We need a bridge. We need to cooperate with uh, each other. So that's the the, the, the main purpose of the uh, Belt and the Road in, initiative, uh, initiative. And uh, today, it's uh, I think it's a uh, very good timing for this uh, uh, seminar. There are the, actually there are many uh, uh, major events <coughs> about the yeah, Belt and Road Initiative. Please allow me to start with uh, highlighting two major events regarding the Belt and Road Initiative. You know, last week Italy signed the Belt and Road Initiative uh, MOU with China just like Greece and uh, Portugal did in late 2018. And the next month, China will host the second Belt and Road Forum for international cooperation. It is expected that more than 40 state leaders and uh, over 1,000 uh, guests from more than 100 countries will participate. The BRI was put forward by Chinese President Xi Jinping in 2013 for calling on jointly building a community with a shared future for mankind and an open, inclusive, clean and beautiful world that enjoys lasting peace, universal security and common prosperity. The initiative is a blueprint based on a keen understanding of history and the trend of time, in line with the long-term and shared interests of mankind. It is China's proposal to the international community in response to the major changes in today's world. The, this proposal is inspired by the global vision and the commitment to peace and harmony inherent in Chinese civilization. It builds on China's philosophies of peace, emphasizing peaceful coexistence, <coughs> peaceful development, and a harmonious world. It meets the need of our times and the trend of the world, and responds to the common aspiration for peace and development of people worldwide. The proposal has hence received high recognition and acclaim from the international community and shown strong vigor and vitality. This week, a few days, just a few days ago, during the visit of China, China's President Xi Jinping to Europe, the leaders of China, Italy, France, and Germany reiterated their willingness of actively pushing China-EU cooperation relations for constant and forward-looking development and advancing the alignment of EU's connectivity strategy with the Belt and the Road Initiative. We are confident that with the joint efforts of the global community, the vision of building such a community for mankind will be translated into reality. 
in its 40 years of reform and opening up, China has not only achieved its own development, but also contributed to global well-being to the best of its ability. China scaled up its financial contributions to the International Monetary Fund and extended a helping hand to countries in distress. With its solid and stable growth, China, together with other emerging market economies, fostered the hope of a global economic recovery. Since then, China has contributed no less than 30% to global growth on average each year. Today's China is the largest trading partner of over 130 countries, the fastest growing major export market, and one of the most popular investment destinations. Estimates suggest that in the coming five years, China will import 8 trillion US dollars of goods, attract 600 million US dollars of foreign investment, and invest 750 million US dollars overseas. China now has a 300 million strong middle income group. The figure may well surge 500 million and even more in just a few years. That will undoubtedly make China the biggest market in the world, a market <coughs> with better access, greater capacity, and a stronger consumer demand. There are some figures about China I want to share with you. On an average day in this country, some 80,000 automobiles are sold. Over 80 million packages are handled and delivered. Movies are shown on 220,000 screens. 4,200 high-speed trains are running, and more than 400,000 tons, tons of grains are consumed. These figures are what happened in just one day. Yet they speak volumes for the enormous business opportunities in China. With such a huge market, China will remain a source of growth, stability, and vitality for the global economy. China's economy may have become the second largest in the world, yet its per capita GDP still ranks the 71st globally. Nearly, two, nearly 20 million people still live below the poverty line. 15 million urban jobs need to be added every year. These are the basic conditions of China. China's status as a developing country is something one cannot ignore. But China's per capita GDP ranks in the back row almost give the same potential of de development as China becomes the world's biggest market. Because we still have a lot to improve, and we invite all to help us. The past four decades of reform and opening up has been an extraordinary journey of advancing with the rest of the world. China achieved its development by opening up and will end with the support of the world. And China has been taking concrete steps to give back by sharing its development opportunities. People from all countries are welcome to get on board the express train of China's development. The first China International Import Expo, which was held last November, was a great uh, success that once again demonstrated China's resolve to further open up. Pre President Xi Jinping emphasized that China's door will not be closed and will only open even wider. This is our solemn commitment to the international community and we Chinese believe in keeping one's word with result-oriented actions. 
The BRI is a concrete and momentous step by China to expand opening up and external cooperation. With the launch of a large number of cooperation projects in less than five years, the BRI is being turned from vision into reality through concrete actions. A strong momentum of global collaboration for BRI development is emerging. Up to now, China has signed 153 BRI cooperation agreements with over 120 countries and more than 20 international organizations. A new landscape of China's opening up, led by the BRI, is taking shape. More and more people have come to the view that BRI is an initiative for peace, cooperation, and openness, a platform for China to work with other countries to promote development, meet challenges, and advance prosperity under the principle of pursuing <coughs> friendship and upholding justice. I know that my short speech may not cover all your questions or interests, but in case of need, please make this note in your calendar. In about three weeks, the second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation will take place in China. There will be heavy media coverage, and I'm sure they can answer almost all of your questions. And if you're interested in the business opportunities in China, mark the 5th and to the 10th November as well. The second China International Import Expo will be held in Shanghai. So to the end of my speech, my sincere thanks go to again Professor Mike daniel Lodge and the Hamster University for inviting me and my colleague here. It's really a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I'm ready for any questions made please by you. Any question, please? <coughs> yes, please. <coughs> I have been working with uh, China and the infrastructure uh, business yes. for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can say that there is culture differences. <laughs> of course. <laughs> they are sometimes hard to handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I really enjoy to cooperate with uh, China. And now we are using one of our build, uh, largest uh, builders in mm. Sweden mm. to cooperate joint venture with Chinese uh, 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 builders. Mm. What is your best advice to have a successful cooperation? Like you mentioned, to, to, uh, the culture difference is a very important uh, issue. It is, sometimes it can be a barrier. If you can overcome it, then you have all the way to the success. Uh, my uh, suggest uh, is that uh, if you can't solve a problem or an issue during a day long meeting, maybe you can try it over lunch, <laughs> over dinner, or, or in a better way. So uh, I, many Chinese will buy that. They, it's a uh, it's a, it's a, for me, I think it's one of the, the trick. <laughs> get things done. Dinner is something. And when you have dinner in China, don't forget Baijiu. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese liquor is very strong, but uh, after uh, a couple of uh, ganbei, they will agree almost everything. <laughs> There is a few. I recommend you to see the development of China because you will never believe what you are seeing, for sure. And it's a fantastic uh, country that has developed so much. So a trip to China is very, very good. Thank you for the promotion. That's exactly what I want to say. I, 
uh, after I came here last uh, June, I found it out that uh, the Swedish business people, they are very smart. They, are, they come to China uh, very often. Last year, uh, it was an increase of 33% uh, only in our region. Uh, which our uh, country uh, covers the seven provinces in the west part of uh, Sweden. That was an increase of 33%. Uh, percent. Uh, Swedish business people uh, went to China. But the S uh, Swedish people, the tourists, they, uh, that was a that, uh, there was a, a decrease of 8%. There were only a 4,000, uh, we only uh, make 4,000 uh, visas for tourists, but over 12,000 business visas to China. So uh, I also recommend all of you, not, uh, if not on a business trip, but also as a tourist, go to China and experience the, the, the development. Uh, uh, you will get inspired and sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.